Look here. This dude is saying something quite interesting. And the whole time is depends upon its truth. Hey, symbolic analogy, numeric, <clears throat> hetero heterogeneous terms. What is he doing? What is he saying? First of all, he's calling it, these are bonds. Why does he call it a bond? There's the reason. Since it perfectly unites into one, both itself and that which it binds together. Look at there. Bonds. Bonds. So look at her. By necessity. These are unities. A certain kind of unity. Hey, perfectly, hey, perfectly unites into one. Woo! Then this is a oneness. Well, wait a minute. If that's true, then I look here. There's a there's a see, there's a bind. It binds both itself. And the things and the things which it relates both on two levels. Well, and it does that perfectly. Now, he's saying, "Hey, look here." This is fundamental. This is fundamental to the universe. These are the ordering principles in the metaphysics of the cosmology of the time is. So look here. You know what you can do? All you have to see is that he's going to substitute these ideas into the analogy. He's going to go through a certain kind of reasoning to say, hey, you know what? By the way, these are not physical elements. He says, hey, don't think of them in that way. They're principles. So there are things that are like air, like earth, like water and fire. And you know what? You can you can see that you can put them in analogical structures. And that means all of this follows. Next. But then he goes on to do something most curious. 
through, look here, through all of these interactions, since, hey, since one flows into the other, they're not static, they're not like elements, what we call elements, one passes into the other. So this is a continuous unfoldment. of a process that goes on and on. For these principles are connected and float in and out. So he says, hey, you know what? Since one can float into the other and the other into the other, what can we really say about them? I mean, you, might, you can call earth fire if you want. If one flows into the other, the other flows into the other then these are only stationary moments in a process through which they go through these so-called elements or principles. So he asks, hey, uh, then you might as well call earth water or fire, because sooner or later, in the process of change, they're all going to go one into the other. So what the hell is it? He says, you know what? Don't call them by these names. Just call them such-like. Mm -hmm. It's about however, if you ask, what are these things like if they are such like? He comes out and says, you know what? The underlying nature of all of these things going through all of these processes is just like gold. Not clay. Gold. This is his vision of physical reality. And you know what? It's pretty, pretty close to uh, quantum mechanics. One flows into the other, it's beautiful most beautiful arrangements, it's got symmetry, it's got order, and basically what is it? It's something that's alive, something that's a dynamic. Look, that's what it's saying, hey. It's a dynamic, it's just a dynamic. Wow! And uh, this dynamic, in essence, just like gold, which is what you'd expect, wouldn't you? No? Yes? Maybe? No way, right? <laughs> no, because um, these principles um, have to exist somewhere as a constant among the eternal. That's right. And so the, the, the flux of this fine essence doesn't support these principles. Yeah. So the principles of earth, air, fire, and water are some other the, buddy business. That's right. These principles, therefore, <coughs> are eternal. Right? They don't need support. <coughs> if they're eternal principles, they don't need support. Well, they're pretty, pretty curious. Is, it, is that right? I think. I don't know. You don't know what? 
I was thinking of something else. Uh, you can think it's allowed. I was thinking of something else. Yeah. Well, when you get back to this, yeah. I can ask you. Yes. <laughs> What's the test? It's either in the book or it's not? Yes. Right? Yeah. So we'll have to read it. No, yeah, don't give a damn about what Pierre thinks. <laughs> right? Yeah. What? Yes. Mm. Right. You want to see it for yourself? Yes. Understand for yourself? Yes, sir. Even if you look good? <laughs> yes. Woo! Yes, I do want to understand. And even though you might look good understanding? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I twist it and say, well, maybe no one will see it. But no, I'd like it, yes. <laughs> don't do that to you. <laughs> right? Look here. Oh, man. Is it in the book? Yes. Oh, God. Come on, let's take a look. Okay. Where's the uh, part where it says the huh. air, earth, water, and fire are principles? Well, he, he, hey. Do you have a Stephanus number? He doesn't say principles. Oh. The point is, if it's described in this way, Many do principles. they meet the conditions of being principles? Oh, I don't have this book. <coughs> no, he does. He uses a word that would be used with principles, I think. Anybody forms. He calls them forms. Anybody have an extra <coughs> copy? Where's my tune? For these reasons, I'm at 32C. For these reasons and out of these materials, such in kind and four in number, the body of the cosmos was harmonized by analogy and brought into existence. Yeah. Hey, as a result, the whole thing is united and has an identity wow. yeah. uh -huh. and will not be dissolvable in any way, <coughs> therefore it's eternal. These conditions. So we fashion this whole thing as one whole? And, uh, wow. Um, really? <laughs> Interesting. Now, he goes into the construction of the soul. <laughs>
He returns to this issue of the elements, okay, at 42 C, D. Introduces the idea of time with the elements. Especially at 43C, that whole section. And um, if you want to get to the section where he again picks it up, it's at 48C, the so-called errant principle, an errant cause. Because we must gain a view of the real nature of fire and water, air and earth before the birth of heaven. Right. No one has explained their generation. But we assume that men know what fire is. We call them principles and presume that they are the elements of the universe. <coughs> yeah, yeah. They're principles of all things. I'll explain them, he says, at D. And here's where he sets the analogies using the four elements, fire, were, fire, water, earth, and, I mean, air and earth. At 49, you're following me at 49. And now he gets down to the way in which they float in and one and out at approximately 50. The elements are merely stages of an ongoing cycle, he says. <coughs> Therefore, what should you really call them? Such like. They're all such like. They elude names. You could say this, that, as if they're stable. Right? 
We shouldn't call them elements. We can talk about them as these or such like to represent their circle. See, they're flowing one into the other and the other. But here we are now at the bottom of 50, uh, the beginning of 50. But that wherein they are always in appearance, coming severally into existence, and wherefrom in turn they perish. In describing that and that alone, should we employ the terms this and that? In describing them, them in respect to such like? Ah, here we are now at B. But we must bestir ourselves to explain this matter again and yet more clearly. Now imagine that a man were to mold all possible figures out of gold and were then to proceed without cessation to remodel each of these into each other and every other. Then if someone were to point to one of the figures and ask, hey, what is it? The fair and safest reply and point of truth would be, it's gold. Hmm. Therefore, such like ends up being like gold. And this substance receives all bodies through the artful transformation of one into the other and back again they constitute the world of appearance. Therefore, there has to be something that stamps upon them, copies as it were, in a marvelous fashion, very difficult to describe. So therefore, do we have before us support from the text for our strange conclusion about this work? Oh, so, well, I just saw it clearly now. I mean, um, he compares them to the figures made out of gold, yeah. right? In but, some marvelous way. Yeah from the forms they then impose upon the substance which is like gold, and they take on the primal elements, no. fire, earth, water, air, and with those we make various things. Clever? Yeah. Therefore, it's all analogy. Huh? But he does say it is. What's an analogy? Later. Hey, within, it is not an arbitrary way of representing numbers and things. It's therefore the most beautiful bonds since it perfectly unites. See, it unites it through all of these substances and their transformations, both itself and the things which it relates. And it binds it all together perfectly. But in essence, what are we talking about? One thing. The substance of all of our reality is like gold. Interesting work. Yeah. yeah there's more to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have to then get into errant causes and what he means by that. Yeah, that's later. Yeah, what were you thinking? You oh, can't cash it in. I'm not sure what he means, but it's more. Well, ask God, please. The substance of reality is like gold and that analogy. Well, I'm not so sure that's the substance of reality. Or did you mean the one? That, that whatever it is that, that assumes any position, any form of gold, right there in the last sentence, is, is a, a copy of something that um, uh, already existed. 
in some way. Um, and, and so I'm thinking that the principle of analogy is to be able to make models and copies. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's true. But itself, can you talk about what it is itself that one can use for copies and models? Um, that's where he goes. Is he saying that the, that that substance, that suchness, goes throughout all levels of analogy? Is that is that what you just meant? That's what he's doing. That suchness is. Oh, no, well, no, 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 not suchness. Yeah, suchness. All analogies. All analogies. No, wait a while. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, don't forget, he's talking about the way these things are before creation. Right? This is before creation. These elements are like this. So therefore, he's looking at it purely. As wow. Primary elements before creation. Because then he has errant causes and other things that bring about the world where we commonly call our world. Okay, yeah. But this is, he's looking at saying, this is the way things really are. And before creation, we can talk about it this way. So these are underlining powers <coughs> and representation of the nature of reality before the appearances came through creation. And that's why you can al allow analogy with such like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, well, I mean, Go ahead. Yeah, I'd say if there's anything more, there's we still have the question of because he's saying we call them principles. It doesn't mean they are principles. Now we're going to talk about them before creation, and then they also are the such like appearances that flow in the world of a, well. What are they? Are they appearances or are they principles? But excuse me. You denied the use of the idea of principles in your beginning speech, and now you reintroduce them as if I forgot what you said in the beginning of your statement. Should I do that? Should, should I forget that? Well, well, I just right, I'm checking with you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is what this is the problem is that. If he's, if he's willing to talk about them before creation, then he must have an existence prior to creation. And that's, I associate that with principles, right? Like, hey, if you exist prior to creation, then you must be a principle. Therefore, these are principles. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Even the fire I see in the everyday world is a principle? Those are principles. Is that what he said? <laughs> that was what I say. Is that what he said? No, I, well, he says that we call them principles. <coughs> and uh, actually, he labels it <coughs> even we better. Say, we say, yeah. yeah. It's not a formal. Sorry, I was just saying, it's in my mind a little stronger than call. It's we speak, we say. Yeah. It's relating it to the logo sometimes. Yeah, yes, indeed. That's all we can do. Is no, no. We could say they also actually exist as principles. They are principles, right? You don't have to say just when you say they're principles. But they are. I mean, it's are. different, right? Like this most beautiful of bonds business, right? He says it most perfectly unites into one, both itself and that which it binds together. But he never says what it is. Yeah, it does that. <laughs> right? There's things he doesn't say. This is not a, it's not called a reason? Yeah, but Sense? it's different than saying what it is. The most beautiful bond, since it meets this condition, is called a beautiful bond. What do you call the relationship between those two? Beautiful. Of course, but you're, <laughs> you're avoiding the question. I'm, well, okay. <laughs> Does that meet the condition that we're talking about? You, if you recall, you said this is not telling us what a thing is. No, what a bond, what the bond, what the bond, the most beautiful bond is. Oh, you, you want to know the nature of the word bond? No, he says it's the natural property of God. Pardon me, let me make sure. The issue now is what does he mean by a bond? Yeah. Oh. No, this particular bond. 
Yeah. 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 You want to know what it is? Yes. Ah. 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 Um. Uh, if a let's see how far Leah was here should help us. <laughs> Why? Because she's into beauty. She'd oh. always say that's love. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not, it's not introduced here, so yeah. I won't introduce it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I think that's enough. Hey, folks. Saturday. I'm set. Mickey Mouse. I got my gloves on. Um, <laughs> Saturday at my house. Saturday at my house. Wait a minute. Did you want to make some statement about tomorrow? Uh, I... Yeah, bring bring your best philosophy. No umbrella. Uh, indoors or out? No. Yeah. Anything else? Well, Robert's hand was up. I was just saying, you know, we you, we had that kind of coming together of the thought of people should know about the taping and what the thought is. Yeah, and I think there was an announcement. Since people came in late, I thought he might make it. Yes. If you didn't mind, Jeff, make an announcement. For those people who came in late, we're going to try to make a sign of some form, but <laughs> which we used to do. Uh, we're talking about tonight or tomorrow or both? No, well, any time you turn the camera on. Okay. And we did put a sign on the audio. We did? Okay. So oh, what we did is we're going to try and do better about making oh, sure that everybody's aware that yeah. whenever you're inside that door or if we're at David's, you know, wherever the sign is, mm -hmm. I'll also try to make an announcement and say, if you have private conversations, just take them outside because eventually they're going to be in the wild. They're going to be on the internet. So if anything goes juicy on the tape, it's your responsibility. <laughs> We're not going to edit it out. Not, not ours. So just take private conversations outside, and I'll, I'll do my best to let you know when when uh, when we're live. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Say, Gina, should this tape be um, blotted out? Yeah. No. <laughs> but believe me, I had that thought. Yeah, that's a good point. The third issue is uh, we'll have a sign on the door. I'll do my best to let everybody know. But Pierre is bringing up the third point, which is there's not going to be any editing. It's we really want an archival raw. This is what the way the NS was. So, so we're going to send Gina's tape to the Pope just the way it is. <laughs> right. Thank you. Then we should include the gossip. Okay. <laughs> If I brought a dream, though, and I, for whatever reason, said this is not going on. Okay. Can't do that. Sorry to not follow that. Was good. And, uh, Jeff, Hold on. Jeff Lowe has brought up, Jeff Lowe just brought up a really good point. So if I, if I bring a dream to a Friday night or any place where we're recording, and I, can I say, well, uh, this one I don't want to go on the web. And the answer to that is no. If we're recording, it's up. So if you want to do something that's not being recorded that could potentially be in the wild out there on the web, don't bring it on Friday. Yeah. Don't do it on Friday night. Do it somewhere else. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. And recording is off. Thank you. I didn't get that.